All right, I'm here with uh, Caitlin Olson, who we all know, of course, as Sweet Tea from FX Sunny. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. But now we're getting to know her as Mackenzie, um, whose last name I still can't pronounce, even though I heard it on the last episode about six or seven times um, on the hit series, Fox series, The Mick. Um, how, how has the experience been juggling two shows? I mean, it, it must be kind of crazy. It is crazy, but it's a huge honor. I'm so happy that, um, you know, they wanted me to do this. And I'm really grateful to John Landgraf, at, of, of, he's the president of FX, for letting me do it. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's such, I get to play two different characters and I get to work year round instead of, you know, Sunny shoots two months out of the year. Um, my kids are off to school, not off to school. <laughs> like boarding school. They're in preschool and kindergarten. But um, I have my days free now. So, um, you know, I have more time to, to work year round. And it's just been, it's just, it's such an honor. Well, and, and you've been um, on Sunny. I mean, Sunny got renewed for seasons 13 and 14, which is going to put it um, tied with the longest running live action um, show ever on television. And then um, season two of The Mick, uh, you guys got renewed a couple of days ago. Congratulations on that. Um, you know, you. most people kind of like hope for just to make it one season. And here you are on two hit shows that, you know, you're going into 14 seasons and now season two. Do you ever like kind of just pinch yourself? Like this is incredible. Yeah, it's really surreal. I think I'm kind of just still numb about the whole thing because I, I, I can't wrap my mind around it all happening. I mean, I, I just feel really lucky and um yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how this happened. I'm really proud of both of them, and I'm not surprised that the Mick got renewed. I think it's actually genuinely very funny, um, but it's just such an honor. I feel really grateful. Well, let's dive a little bit um, deeper into um, the Mick and, and your role, Mackenzie. Um, you know, on the show, you play the aunt who's kind of just thrust into raising her her spoiled rich bratty uh, niece and and two nephews um, after your sister poodle um, amazing amazing name uh, and her husband flee the country um, so that they can avoid jail time how um how did the show actually come about like how did you first learn about it where you sent the pilot was it um, you know what was the whole process so John and Dave Chernin um, are two amazing writers who have written on Sunny for years. And they, um, they set off to write this show. They want it to be a network comedy, but they wanted it to, to feel like it was on cable. And they were writing it with me in mind, but they didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. And when they sold the pilot, um, it was right when Sunny was renegotiating for those next two seasons. Um, so they asked if I could do it. And I honestly, I, I knew they were really funny. And I, I didn't even want to read the script because I didn't feel like I could commit to all of that. I mean, that was like, you know, a couple years ago when this was actually really happening. My kids were still very little. I was like, I don't know how I would even be able to do that. Um, but I read the pilot and I really just couldn't say no. I thought it was really special. The character was so funny. I really felt like I could do something special with it. And um, so I said yes. Now, um, were there any kind of, I guess, um, nerves or, or like pressure you may have put on yourself in terms of going from Sunny, which is like a true like ensemble piece and you guys are all equals. And then you go to a show where you're headlining it and, you know, you're, you're the main star. Was it a weird transition as an actor to do that or was it just easy because the material was so good? The material was very good, and so I felt really confident um, about my ability to do it. However, I have the kind of personality that can't just be like, this will be great. I was like, oh, good. I'm going to ruin all of this, and it will all fall on my shoulders. So, um, yeah, I mean, I absolutely, I feel like that every day. There's also the pressure because I think Sunny is such a funny show, and it was such an underground thing, and our, our fans were just rabid from the beginning. I mean, I still meet people who say, well, I was there from the beginning, because most people will only heard about it in like its fifth, sixth season. Um, and I think a lot of our Sunny fans thought that I was selling out by doing a network show. Um, so it was, it was actually, it's, I still get all kinds of tweets and, and Instagram messages about how like, it's actually really funny. We actually really like it. Um, so that was nice. It was nice to actually have it air and have people see it and realize that, you know, network shows can be funny. I imagine it's also, um, you know, like probably Sunny, um, 
uh, is it's also probably a lot of fun. I mean, you've got on Sunny, you've got your whole cast who are adults that tend to act like children, and then you go to your other show in the mix, and you've got children who tend to act a little adulty sometimes. It, it, I mean, that's got to be such a cool like um, you know juxtaposition there. Yeah, it's funny. I actually just described it like that the other day. I it, it's it's exactly like that, and it you know they're they're both really fun and they're both completely different experiences. And having on Sunny all adults as my co-stars, there's some great advantages to that. And we're also friends and I married one of them and we, we have the same sense of humor. Um, to also produce the mix so that I could help cast it at the very least, I wanted to make sure that I was working with people who we all had great chemistry and, um, these guys are so talented and such nice, kind people. And it's a whole different experience, but we're having a lot of fun. Like these guys, the kids I, I work with and kind of coach a little bit sometimes if they need it. And um, and I can improvise with, the, you know, with, with Scott McCarthy who plays Jimmy and with Carla Jimenez who plays Alba, both amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's apples and oranges, but they're both really fun and have their own advantages. Now, there's a lot of, um, like you said, it, it's like a, a network show that's kind of built for um, for cable, really. Um, and and then with the kids, I mean, the kids are all three of them are incredible on the show, or you know, that that play your kids on there. So I think so. Obviously, some are adults. Um, they. Uh, and you mentioned, you know, having a coach. Were they were they kind of game? I mean, the Mick has some pretty intense stuff in there, especially physically, um, physical wise. Were they just game for for anything, or are there times where you kind of have to like, this will be okay. This is how you do it, type of thing. Yeah, they they are. I will say they are game for anything, and they want to be game for any anything, but they're very nervous. Like uh, the things we ask them to do sometimes are much bigger, and uh, they're beyond their comfort zone, and um, yeah, we, they each have come to me at different times and expressed just concern about, just about not doing it well. They want to do it, but they're just nervous that they're going to look stupid. And so um, that feels really good, too, to be able to promise them that I, you know, they, tr they trust me. They all happened to, this is not why I cast them, but they all happened to be Sunny fans, except for the little one. Um, so I think they really just trust me that I'm not going to let them look dumb and that I will... Um, I will help them through all of it. And if there's something they're really uncomfortable with or like a line that just isn't rolling off the tongue, it, we fix it and we, we make it work for them. And I think that hopefully that helps them feel safe enough to just trust me. Now, um, obviously since you help, um, you know, cast a show, the, it, it shows why the chemistry on there is so strong. And, and you mentioned, you know, Carly Jimenez who, it's great to finally see her kind of in a spotlight role. I mean, she's played the maid in so many other, you know, shows. I loved her in like Raising Hope and all these other ones, but here she's kind of, she was thrust into it. And uh, you guys kind of stripped her of that maid title like two episodes in and made her just part of the, you know, of your team itself. And um, and then you have Scott, Scott MacArthur, who just seems like he was like pulled out of the bar there at Patty's and like placed into your show. Like he'd be one of those characters. Um, did you had you worked with them before or know known their work before you cast them and how how like instant was all that chemistry on on set? Uh, no, I didn't know of either of them. Um, Carla came in and was just the obvious choice for Alba. Um, we actually had her come back to do another scene. Um, her audition scene that we had her come back and do was in episode um, one hundred two, the grandparents episode, where I tell her that I drugged her. Um, and we go back and forth like I'm just kidding because you already like we do the whole thing where she finds out she's getting drugged She handled that so beautifully. It was hilarious And then we did the scene where we go to the club and she is on ecstasy. You should, her audition is amazing um, She was always the clear choice and then Scott MacArthur. I actually met with to uh, write to be on our, um, in our writers room and he was just so funny and his um, his spec script was amazing, and so we hired him for um, as a writer at first. And the more we just got to know him and hang out with him, he just kind of was Jimmy. Um, and so we were holding all these auditions for Jimmy, and I just couldn't stop thinking, like, 
we were meeting with some really funny guys. Um, but Scott's got that perfect combination of um, like a lovable doof. Like he's got the best of intentions. He's rough around the edges, but he's also just cuddly. Like he, he's like a big teddy bear. Um, so it just it just seemed like the obvious choice. So it made him Jimmy. That was a, that was a good call. Um, now uh, let's kind of go and discuss. I think we touched on it before the. Uh, kind of brutal, but really hilarious uh, physical comedy that you get to do on the show. Was that kind of um, input that you put in or are, are there times you get a script and you're like, guys, like I can only get hit by a car so many times. <laughs> no, I, I love stuff like that. I think they, they know I love stuff like that from Sunny and it just kind of makes us laugh. A big physical comedy is just always going to be funny to me. Um, and the idea that one woman can get hit by a car that many times and just bounce right back. Um, there's something very funny about that. I will say the only place where we ever, they want to do these big stunts and then they want people covered in blood. And I'm like, well, okay, like he had a nosebleed. We can have blood here, but let's not explode his face because that's not realistic. So we're always kind of meeting in the middle on that. But as far as like the big stunts and stuff, I mean, I the more the merrier. They kind of have to like, pull me back from doing all of them myself. Like they wouldn't actually let me get hit by the car. That was a stunt person. Right, it's probably smart. I would have liked to have tried it, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> um, you know, and, and one thing I love about, about the show itself is, you know, the premise is, um, is pretty simple, like on paper, what you've got, but it's it like when you, when you watch it and, and each of the episodes, you, ta you guys tackle so many issues that are that are now that are current and you do them really well and with a lot of heart and it's something that you don't really expect when you hear you know when you see the characters and you get to know the characters it must be really like i mean you guys have done like you know um safe sex uh i think that was like episode three or four and then you just did um one that was uh you know kind of on transgender rights and then um you know disciplining uh, you know, how to discipline a kid, um, you know, the spanking and everything. I mean, is it, it must be really amazing to be also part of the show that isn't just laugh out loud funny, but actually does give some heart and input into what is going on today. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things about it. Um, I really love uh, watching a show that is primarily funny, but when you look back, you're like, oh, right, they were, they had a message in there. But you just laughed the whole way through. Um, it was really important to me that Mickey had a little bit of heart, um, but we never wanted to beat you over the head with it. So I like to just introduce that in subtle ways, but you know, ultimately it's a comedy. Um, it was really important to me. I actually, before we even started writing, um, I kind of pitched that Ben at some point either wanted to be a girl or, or was confused about it, or maybe wanted to do pageants or something like that. Um, because I thought that that would be so great to watch Mickey fiercely defend this kid, even though she has no idea what to do with this information. But I wanted it to become very important to her to get him into pageants and he can do whatever he wants because that's what he wants. You know, um, we never ended up going there, but but when they came up with the episode idea for wanting to get Ben into the little girls' school across the street, I was like, great, let's make it so that he likes wearing those clothes and we make it so that it's okay and that he has questions about it and I don't know the answers and that's okay too. And that he should just be himself and you know, we'll figure it out together. And I think that's a really important message. Yeah, it's great and um, kind of you know, unexpected when you first hear about the show. I mean, I know I was, I was kind of caught off guard and then I was like, wow, there's just such like, there's such powerful messaging in the show and it's done with so much art and the way that you play and that you play with them is, is incredible. Um, and so, You've been on Gold Derby before. We've, um, you know, we discussed you as a best supporting actress contender for years now for Sunny, um, but now we're we're kind of going more into the uh, we are into the lead actress um, category list of contenders here. And in a perfect world, you'd be nominated like it's a done deal. And so in that perfect world, you have to submit an episode to Emmy uh, voters that is, you know, the best uh, representation of what you've done on the show. Do you have one in mind? I'm conflicted, to, tell, to be quite honest. I watched all of the episodes, you know, up to what just aired. Um, 
and you have some great stuff to pick from in there. You pick for me then. I don't know. I, I cannot be objective. I don't know. I like moments. There's certain things. I mean, there's some I'm just so staring at how bad I look. I can't even watch myself act. And then there's ones where I'm like, I'm amazing in that scene. I don't know. I don't The whole thing makes me very uncomfortable. I think it'd be great to do one. I, I mean, you want to show variety. Like, I... I I like the big physical comedy stuff. I like the manipulation stuff. I like the little moments of heart. I don't know. What do you think? I think you. I think you just you just described the mess. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People really, people really like the mess. You, yeah. I mean, they had a message. You had where you jumped on the car because they locked you in in uh, in your room. Yeah. Um. So you have the physical, you've got the manipulation with the kids when you amazingly drive through a puddle and leave them at the end thinking they're going to go get somebody to eat. I mean, it's, it's such a great, it's such a great episode. You know, usually people um, in this position would submit the pilot and it's a strong episode as well. It's one that I have down as well as um, the master where you, where you went on the boat and you're all drunk and a lot of physical comedy and drunk scenes tend to work and win people a lot of Emmys like, um, Jim Parsons on the Big Bang Theory. I think he submitted like three of his winning episodes were all because he was he played that he was drunk at some point or high. Um, that always goes well. But personally, the mess so far has been, I think, the best representation. You're it's just incredible in that episode. I wrote about it because it was so good. Oh, cool! Thanks. All right, the mess it is. That was easy <laughs> for now. Um, now, okay. The final question. Um, kind of went over this at the beginning. You're an Oregon duck. I'm an Oregon duck. Ducks are in the Elite Eight right now. By the time this probably comes out, either hopefully Final Four, cross your fingers, of Kansas scares me tomorrow, um, yeah. or they win it all like they did the first time uh, the NCAA was uh, tournament came around. Um, what would you rather have? The Ducks win that championship or Emmy winner Caitlin Olson? I'm going to go Ducks win the championship because I don't really, for an actress, I don't love when everyone's staring at me. So, um, yeah, let's let's put the attention on our Ducks. I'll meet you there. I'll meet you for some tomato cheese yeah. at that delicious restaurant on campus. That's, that sounds awesome. I, I would love to uh, to do that, and I would love to have the championship too and win in football. That's one I really want badly. Me too. More of a football fan. Yeah, yeah. Ditto. Um, well, Thanks for taking the time to uh, to talk to us today. Um, congratulations on your success, the success of the show. It's it's great, uh, season two, and really pulling for you um, this year at the Emmys. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Nice to talk to you.